Okay, let's talk about work for a little bit. Work. So again, work is a mode of transfer. If the surroundings do work on the system, the system gains energy, and we're always looking at things relative to the system. And if the system's gaining energy, work would be defined as a positive number. Okay. So, but if the system does work on the surroundings, that means the system's giving its energy away in some forward, you know, some mode of transfer to the surroundings, and the system would lose that energy, and so work would end up being a negative transfer relative to the system. So it's all relative to the system here. And so for a gas, if we look at a sample of a gas, let's say I'm that gas, and I'm really compressed, I'm a compressed gas, but somebody lets me loose, and I start s expanding, and I, to expand, have to push the surroundings back. Who's doing work, me or the surroundings? Me, and I'm the system. And if I'm the system doing work, What's W, positive or negative? negative? Negative in that case. And so when a gas expands, we find out that, oh yeah, the gas is losing energy in the form of, you know, in the form of <coughs> energy being transferred from the system to the surroundings via work, if you will. So work is being performed by the system on the surroundings. However, if we compress a gas, and when I notice, is the gas doing something if we're compressing it? No, we're doing something. We are the surroundings. Okay, so I'm the gas, and I'm getting compressed. The surroundings are pushing in on me, causing me to get smaller and smaller and smaller, right? I'm getting compressed. It's the surroundings that are doing the work now. And notice, when you have a compressed gas, that's a really high energy state, right? Higher energy than when it's really diffuse and spread out. And so, when you compress a gas, the surroundings are actually giving energy to the system, that gas. And so W is positive in that case. So for a compression, W is positive. For an expansion, W is negative. Well, it turns out we define W here in a couple of ways. So technically, the ultimate definition of W is negative P external dV, take the integral. How fun is that? That is the ultimate definition of work, is the integral of negative P external times dV. Does that look pretty fun, integration? Well, we do two situations in talking about work. We do one at constant pressure, constant pressure. And I, when I say constant pressure, and again, I should use lowercase p's here, constant external pressure. That is great for taking an inter integral anyways, at least making the math easy. Because if that's a constant, then I can pull it out front, right, of the integral. And what's the integral of dv in that case then? V or delta V in this case, if you're going from V initial to V final. And so sweet, under terms of constant pressure, work just reduces down to negative P external times delta V. So again, the top here, that's the definition of work from the, from the get-go, the ultimate definition. When we're at constant pressure, though, it's a nice little easy integral. It was really easy to do. So we get a problem, though. The other situation we talk about is a reversible situation. A reversible, and we usually combine that with isothermal. We wouldn't technically have to, but the math gets a little bit crazy if we don't isotheral. So the math gets a little bit difficult to treat in a class like this if we just don't keep the two together. But what reversible means? I mean, reversible is kind of this funny process, but reversible means that we're trying to go as, uh, carry out a process or reaction as close to equilibrium states all the way through as we can. We want to infinitesimally change something to cause a change in the system. And then once it responds to our change, we infinitesimally change it again. And it's, it proceeds just infinitesimally out of equilibrium the whole way through. So here's the deal. Let's say we're doing a reversible isothermal expansion of a gas. We're causing a gas to expand, or we're letting it expand, if you will. What that means reversibly is that we're at equilibrium the whole time. And so usually the situation we envision is we got a piston. So, and at the bottom of this piston is a gas. So, and this gas is going to expand. And it, and it's going to expand isothermally. And so as it expands, if I try to keep it as close to equilibrium as possible. 
So what that means in this case is a mechanical equilibrium. These gas molecules are going to be bumping against the piston with a certain frequency and a certain average force, causing a certain what? Pressure. But for this thing to be in equilibrium, then what must be true going the opposite direction? Same pressure. Same pressure. And so in this, case, in this case, for reversible process, your P external must equal the pressure, and I'll write this, of the gas. But usually if I just write P, it just means of the gas. That is what's true, and it's for the entire process. In this case, as this thing expands, the pressure of the gas is probably changing, which means we have to balance the pressure, you know, the force being exerted on this pressure to make that external pressure balance the entire time. But all of a sudden, that kind of sucks, all of a sudden. Because when I go back to doing this, or, sorry, when I go back to doing this, I end up with, W equals the integral of negative, well, in this case, for reversible isothermal process, my external pressure now equals the pressure of a gas. And I get there. And this is a problem. Is the pressure of a gas, in this case, a constant? No, it's not a constant. So it's not necessarily something I can just pull out in front of the integral. In fact, if it's a perfect gas, <coughs> what's the pressure of a perfect gas actually equal? Perfect gas, there's pressure. Perfect gas law. NRT over V. And so in this case, work turns into integral of negative NRT over V dV. Now in this case, assuming the moles of gas is constant, R is a constant, and because we're doing it isothermally, temperature is constant. These pull out in front of the integral. But what's the integral of 1 over V dV? Natural log. And so for a reversible isothermal expansion, your work in this case is negative nRT ln V final over V initial. So that's the other one on your sheet there. And those are your two big situations for when you're solving for work. Are you solving for work at constant pressure, which is an irreversible process typically, or are you doing a reversible isothermal expansion and need to use this ultimate definition? Whether you simply memorize the appropriate definition or derive them from the ultimate definition, that's up to you. I probably in this case might even consider just memorizing these. Constant pressure, I use this for work. So reversible isothermal, I use this guy for work. So, but you can ultimately derive them as well, technically, let's do this. Connect those. Cool. Those may end up getting plugged in in one way, shape, or form back into this equation right here. But because delta U can get plugged in back into the, end, the change in enthalpy equation, it might go down into calculating enthalpy. We often give you situations where we're doing a, a reversible isothermal you know, expansion or an expansion against a constant pressure. And we start saying, under those conditions, what's Q, what's W, what's delta U, and what's delta H? And you got lots of interrelationships to start calculating out based on what W is, plugging it in. That might help you with these guys. Then substitute this in to help you get delta H. All sorts of lovely stuff. <coughs>